Hey guys, welcome back here to the hillside. Today we're talking about shade loving plants. Okay, so on this side of my house right here, uh, it's relatively shady in the morning. It gets about four hours of, sun of sunlight during the afternoon and then is in full shade again towards the evening. So it gives you a perfect opportunity to grow some shade loving plants. All right, so when it comes to shade loving plants, who doesn't love a nice hosta, okay? They come in a variety of colors, shapes, different leaf sizes, different leaf patterns and colorations. However, there are other plants that are do amazing in the shade as well. And today we're gonna show you a couple of those plants that do just as well as hostas do in the shade. So let's go ahead and show you what we're talking about. All right, so for a springtime treat, why not plant some bleeding hearts? Okay, so if you have a area that gets partial sun to you know even shade like predominantly shade as long as it stays relatively moist now this plant is going to produce tons and tons of flowers and every year it's just going to get bigger and bigger and put on more and more flowers now this is a rhizome so what that means is it's going to die down in the middle of summer when it gets really hot this plant does not like the heat so the shade also helps it to basically stay cool and to produce a lot of flowers so do consider that when planting this that if you have a shady area Bleeding hearts are fantastic. Okay, there are some that come in different colors, such as white flowers or even yellows, I believe I've seen before, which are amazing, but I haven't seen any locally I could purchase. But anyways, like I said, this is a perfect plant for a nice shady area on the side of your house or you have a spot that's kind of out of the way that really doesn't get a lot of sunlight, maybe under some trees. The, the big thing is they need to stay moist, okay? So long as it stays moist, heavily mulch around them, they'll be doing just fine. And like I said, every year they're gonna come back bigger and bigger with more and more flowers. So let's go ahead and see what else we can plant in the shade, guys. Okay, so taking the long trip from right here to right here, this is the hellebore, okay? Now this plant loves the shade. It is an awesome woodland plant. It actually will start blooming sometimes even in late February to early March with snow on the ground. Now they're not the most showiest flowers. Some like this is a pale green color. Uh, they are some that come in pinks and purples. Uh, but this plant is deer resistant, just as the bleeding heart is. Uh, the leaves are tough, so the deer don't really prefer them, the little jagged edges. However, this plant loves the shade, all right? You keep it moist, you keep it in the shade, it's gonna just produce nonstop blooms, okay? So definitely consider growing the hellebore. One drawback is they can be quite expensive. However, if you check out my video, how to grow hellebores from seed, or more importantly, how to let mother nature grow hellebores from seed for you, you can do it fairly inexpensive, okay? So yes, it may be a little bit more on the pricier side to get these established. But once you do, you're gonna get literally hundreds of seeds every year sprouting up when you'll be able to dig them up, transplant them, give them to your friends, save tons of money and grow more of these beautiful flowers in the shade. So let's see what else we got going on here in the shade. Okay, so while it may not be the first plant you think of for a shade garden, this is actually the clematis vine, okay? Or clematis or whatever you may want to call it. Okay, so, well, as you can tell right now, we're getting full sun during the middle part of the day. So that little four hour window is gonna give this plant just enough energy, just enough sunlight, that it's gonna be able to produce beautiful flowers just like this. Okay, so like I mentioned before, this side of the garden in the early morning, no sunlight whatsoever. The sun rises literally on the other side of the house and this area stays very shaded. During the middle of the day, we have full sun like this. Then as the season uh, progresses and as the days get longer, the sun kind of favors over here, which is then gonna be blocked by my neighbor's house, which actually casts more shade on this area over here. However, during the blooming period in the early spring, it gets just the right conditions that it can make it work, okay? So just because you may not have optimum conditions or ideal full sun conditions, guys, give it a shot. You never know what you might be able to pull off or just what little micro, you know, climate may exist in your property that you can actually produce a beautiful flower such as this that is technically supposed to be grown in full sun to maybe a partial partial sun but you know not as much shade as it actually gets over here on this side of the house so there's an idea guys don't give up just because you don't have full sun you can grow clematis vines okay guys so it's a little bit early in the season for this plant to be blooming but this is the virginia spider wart okay now this is grows naturally on creek banks around streams moist wooded areas it loves this area right here it's very easy to propagate it'll spread uh, very easily if you want to keep dividing it moving it to other spots as i have all around the garden the bees absolutely love it the beautiful little purple flowers like i mentioned just attract so many pollinators and will be just covered in 
bees early in the morning when the uh, fresh flowers do open up. So this, like I mentioned, is a native to the eastern United States. Um, it is a technically a wildflower, but this is a cultivated wildflower kind of developed uh, from its native form. Again, the Virginia spiderwort, or maybe just commonly called spiderwort, will be something that grows amazing in your shaded, moist areas of your garden. So do consider giving this a shot. Something you may not have heard of or used very commonly in your area, but definitely, definitely consider growing this if you have the right conditions. So let's go ahead and see what else we might find here on the shaded hillside. All right, so the last plant I'm gonna talk about today, guys, is called stone crop. Okay, now this is actually growing here on this rock uh, wall when I moved to the house years ago. And although this is a sun-loving crop, it doesn't necessarily mean that it won't grow. Now this area here gets a lot more shade than what I've shown you with the other plants uh, we just talked about. Now, understanding microclimates and understanding your property is what's gonna really benefit you when it comes to selecting plants. Do you have a plant that likes a nice, hot, early, bright morning sun, but needs you know some afternoon shade? Or maybe there are some plants that really need that extra amount of sunlight, but you don't really have the conditions of it. So you might need to plant those in the most sunniest part of your yard uh, that gets the most of the evening sun or the more direct sun okay so very very important to consider this guys when you're planting your gardens uh, for shade or whether it be for a full sun spend some time outside you know watch where the sun rises watch where the sun sets now is the sun going to be blocked in the summertime by a big tree maybe you get early early spring uh, sunlight direct full sun but by the time you know june or july comes around you have a giant oak tree like I do across the street that actually changes the sunlight pattern. And the area I just showed you right behind us, guys, that's gonna be in probably twice as much shade as it is now because this giant oak tree during the middle of the day actually casts a giant shadow on that uh, spot in the garden. So that's why it's very important for you to actually understand every little part of your, uh, your, your yard, your property, wherever it may be, okay? What does well early in the spring may not do well in the middle of summer or vice versa. Maybe, uh, like I have mentioned on the side of my house here, we showed those shade loving plants that in the middle of summer when it's super, super hot, it's actually a benefit that that giant tree across the street is actually putting a lot more shade onto that side of the house. Okay, so while some people might find that to be you know a bad thing we don't oh we're blocking the sunlight out well use it to your advantage okay you can maybe grow some more shade loving crops or plants or flowers or whatever on that side of your property whereas on this side of the property it might get full sun all day long so you can actually plant the sun loving and the sun uh plants that need the more sun in the sunnier area okay so that's just a couple little quick tips here from the hillside gardener hope you guys enjoyed it give you some ideas of what you may want to grow in a shaded area of your yard that is not the typical hydrangea or hostas that we all know that are so popular there are so many videos so many thousands of varieties but you know what sometimes mix it up a little bit try some of those other plants you won't be disappointed all right guys so from here on the hillside we'll see you next time get out there and grow something all right guys bye-bye